After six years of marriage, I discovered my wife's flirty pics and secret affair with a cop, she knew him from high school. I 35M, wife 34F recently engaged in an apparent emotional affair for three to four months until she got caught, and I'm looking for some advice. We have been married for six years, together for eight. D-Day was seven days ago. How I found out, I got a new bank card and forgot to update our wireless slash cellular provider payment. After updating with a new card, something compelled me to check the call logs of her phone. She had been distant slash off and texting late night, and I didn't feel like checking her cell phone slash feeling like a jealous husband, but maybe the call logs would be a good weatherstone to check if anything was wrong. What I saw just raised some alarms, the minutes of conversation with this phone number was greatly larger than any other number combined. She was also calling him late at night slash early in the morning when she was away from home visiting her parents. She was also calling him during her workday, one day she was on the phone with him for 3 to 4 hours. I did a reverse phone number search and found that this one particular person was a good friend of hers from a long time ago. After confronting her with this, and wanting to know what was going on, her initial story was that he was just a friend, has a stressful job, and needed support, he is a police officer, and she greatly respects and is interested in law enforcement in general, almost going to the academy herself. After I asked if she felt that there were any boundaries being broken here, she replied with no. But then changed her story. I asked her to tell me the complete story, and that I was a man and could take it. But if she downplayed, lied, or omitted, that would not be great as we would be stepping over the course of the next three to five iterations of the story, it has changed from, being a good friend to someone who needed support. Harmlessly flirting over text. Sharing an I love you over text message. Digital flirty messages over text and telling fantasies, with her just listening. Sharing semi bare pictures over text message, picture of her in inners in a sexy pose. My wife and him planning on her leaving me and moving in with him. They never met physically to hook up, however he did bring her coffee at her workplace, and they did meet at a gas station. During her self-disclosure, she constantly downplayed by using the it just happened, I had no intention of this getting this far, and it was stupid. She also tried to deflect and lay blame, accusing me of cheating slash having a relationship with someone online, not true, although I did watch pornography. Unfortunately, she has chosen to delete all text messages so there is no proof. She tried to restore the messages but they were not being saved into iCloud. She is working on writing down a timeline of what has happened. I asked her if she loved this man, and she said she did not, it was an escapist fantasy. They talked about how I was emotionally unavailable, and that I would rather be watching movies slash in front of a computer screen instead of spending time with my wife. I have been suffering from depression for a while, and feel like this is an unhealthy behavior on my part. I was also withdrawn and snappy with my wife. When I went to leave to gain some space slash time to think, my wife physically confronted me and did not let me leave to clear my head. She then proceeded to threaten to slaughter herself, taking a loaded gun and pointing it to her head. She said that she didn't want to live a life without me, and that I would get everything in the divorce if she slaughtered herself. I called her father before I left for work that day, saying that I was worried about her physical safety, and that I don't think me calling off work to deal with it would be appropriate, considering it would be like throwing fuel into a fire. We had dinner and his take on it is that we should move and just reset by renewing our vows, wiping the entire slate clean. When he left, she then drafted some melange notes to me and her family members, not going into particulars, but saying that she was at fault. The why she provided, she needed to feel validated and beautiful, and I was not providing that. She also wanted to be listened to and heard, I believe that I have been emotionally detached, and I own that. I do want to believe her, that it may not have been physical, but I don't think I will never know for sure. I reached out to the AP via text message and said that I was not angry at him. I didn't marry him, I married my wife. He has since blocked my wife from calling slash texting, she tried to reach him while I was in the room on speakerphone. I am interested in getting his side of the story, as there are no text messages to confirm. Since then, my wife has been bargaining slash wanting me to sleep in the same room with her. She has been initiating segs, and truth be told, it is amazing. We've done things we have never done before in six years of marriage. However, part of me is feeling like I'm not getting the full story, I wish she had told me everything up front, and I still have a nagging feeling that I still do not know everything. My worst fear, this is all theatrics and smokescreen, and I still don't know the full story because she has consistently lied slash omitted some things that she felt would hurt me to hear. Any new discovery, if I plan on reconciling, would be a fresh wound and start back at stage zero, as my trust in her is completely vanished. I don't want to be an amateur, NSA agent tracking down my wife to keep her honest. Any impartial third party advice would be helpful, I know that in some part, my actions may have driven her to this result. Update 1, I've arranged for the firearms to be stored off premises until this thing to escalates. I will be doing this when she is out of the house, so today during her work shift. We had some talks, she is willing to take a polygraph and she swears it was never physical. She acknowledges that what she shared and talked about was wrong. Her timeline of events, 1. They went to the same HS together and used to work together. They used to talk somewhat frequently, but never about romance slash sex. He has always had a thing for her apparently. 
She never found him attractive, but respected him a lot because of what he ended up doing professionally and seems to be in love with the idea of a cop. I apparently met him once, he's extremely short and not as attractive. 2. Meeting one at the gas station, this took place before they ever started this engagement slash talking, and they caught up. This is what sparked the affair taking place. 3. They shared their first I love you when he mentioned how bad of a day he was having, how difficult his job was, and how he was thinking about destroying himself. He said it first. 4. She increasingly called him, looking at the logs, she was calling him for 2-3 to three hours during her work day. Also calling on the weekends slash evenings. 5. They had gradually began increasing their call volume slash texting volume over time. He would spout crap like wanting to see her bear, wanting to give her a BJ with glasses, wanting to bend her over the police cruiser. Her words are that she didn't participate as much, but also didn't stop it. 6. She sent him pictures of herself, some random photos fully clothed, a couple of photos from her family's house where she was helping deal with her recently deceased grandmother's belongings and babysitting our nephew. She sent pictures of our nephew to him. One day when he was having a bad day, she sent a picture of her shirt pushed up and her inner showing to him to cheer him up. 7. Meeting 2, he met at her workplace to bring her coffee. 8. The final contact with him is he knows, and we need to end this. She is saying that it never got physical, and that she had no desire to get to that point. From my POV, there is no way of knowing. She still hasn't finished writing the timeline, but it is already six pages longhand. I've come to accept that I may never know, and that I have to prepare myself for that, and for in the future if she decides to do this again. I think we had a mini breakthrough today, when after a long day yesterday, I had neglected to put my laundry in the basket, instead laid it on the floor besides the bed. She was extremely snappy with me, and I said I'm sorry, but there are 1000 ways you could have brought that up. Why did you choose to escalate that badly over laundry? I discussed with her that maybe this is why I had the habit of hiding out in the man cave. Over the last year or so, a lot of these little interactions have probably caused me to be avoidant because they are not positive interactions. She paused to think, and I think a light bulb came on. She still will not let me leave or have space. I've been trying to sleep in separate rooms because, one, she's ovulating and two, I need time to process these emotions, events, and plan. I am not making any rash decisions in the next 30 days, and I am preparing myself for the worst. We have some scheduled therapist appointments. One thing about being a BS, how best to handle the plans we had before D-Day. 1. Our anniversary is coming up in a week or two. I had scheduled a fancy night out with my wife. Still good to go? 2. Her birthday is also coming up very soon and I had made plans slash gifts. 3. She has a camping trip planned with her family and she wants me to go. 4. We have family vacation, her family, coming up. Is it wise to go, or would I feel like I'd be sold a crap sandwich during this time? I want to leave the door to reconciliation open, but also want to protect myself right now. At this moment, I feel like I'm carrying the burden by arranging the weapons to be stored offsite and caring about my wife's mental well-being. I don't want to do anything rash until she gets the help she needs. Update 2, I ordered the Not Just Friends book. She has agreed to not contact him. She ended it with a phone call saying that it is over. He is also blocking her, I don't know why. She agreed to tell me immediately if he reaches out or shows up at her workplace. We're still in the process of this, she is still putting the timeline together. She is focusing on the content of the messages and phone conversations, but not the meaning behind them slash where her headspace is. I know I was getting complacent, I also harbored some resentment with her running up credit card debts earlier in the marriage without telling me. To this end, I was becoming emotionally unavailable and pursuing some not so healthy habits. I felt like we were not going in the same direction, and instead of having those difficult conversations, I chose to isolate myself or distract myself with work, video games, YouTube, and crap. At the end of the day, I still don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm committed to not making any major decisions in the near term. My wife is undergoing intensive outpatient therapy, so I feel like my decision may be delayed. My priorities now are, my wife's health and safety, as well as my own, and figuring out what I want to do, observing my wife's behavior, and finding out what this other relationship meant to her and whether she genuinely wants to reconcile, or is too afraid to separate. Update 3, she has read the book about not just friends, and even completed more modules than I have on the 7-day affair recovery bootcamp, where they discuss how important it is to disclose everything that happened. Her version of the story is that she felt alone in the marriage and it was nice that someone listened to her, and that she got sucked into the emotional talks because she did not have the proper boundaries in place. We celebrated her B-Day with a small celebration. I had already bought her a present. She decided not to go camping, she wanted to be physically present while we were talking through things, going through the boot camp, and reading the Not Just Friends book. We did go out for our anniversary because the food is excellent and reservations are hard to come by. She suggested going to Victoria's Secret for me to pick something sexy out for her, but I declined. It was very bittersweet. I feel heavily conflicted, and I wonder if this is normal. At one end, I still love her and do want to work things through. 
sometimes it seems like she is making a genuine effort in building back the trust. However, there are little happenstances where I ask for her phone and there is some resistance to her surrendering it. Invasive thoughts about her actually not cutting off contact with the AP. When I had looked through her phone, I noticed that she had Instagram and was still friends with the AP, and reached out to talk. She did this without informing me about it. AP has remained silent, or so it seems, so I don't think I'm getting any information from him. Even if I did, I wonder if he would be honest slash truthful about the matter, as he has a lot to lose in this. Part of me wants to pack up and leave, and go through the divorce process. I feel unattractive to my wife, and I don't want to go through with a marriage where this happens again. She attests that it will not, but I feel like I don't know everything that happened, nor do I understand what caused my wife to pursue this AP like a puppy dog, she asserts it was one-sided and they mainly talked about work and life in general, but the call logs show her calling him a lot. Is it normal for the BS to be somewhat ambivalent? What are things I can do to, get assurance that this won't happen again, with this AP, or a year slash two down the road? Forgive my wife so that I can move on from this? I feel like she hasn't had a taste of consequences, in fact it seems that I am becoming a better husband to her, which is good overall, I think. Is this a common stumbling block where the BS just has to eat it? How do I determine if this is true remorse? Update 4, one thing that was concerning me, and I don't know if I am justified in thinking this, but I want to know the content of those messages. I've tried various recovery software and it seems like there is no way to recover if the phone was reset from an iCloud backup. She freaks out every time I try and becomes apprehensive when I attempt to recover them, even though they fail. I think it could be that it progressed further than her letting on, they physically met up slash had segs multiple times. She was more passionate than leading on, sending more photos slash vids. She said disparaging things about me slash our marriage that she doesn't want me to see. Still in contact. Neither of these options are good. I think she's just beginning to realize the pain. For instance, when I get angry or flooded, I try to take some time away, and I say that I'm taking some time to cool off. She is big on physical touch, so she reaches out to hold my hand, rub the back of my head, or hug during these moments. She does ask what she can do to help, so I think we're both just figuring out what that looks like. Her story was that she wanted to reach out to see if he had time to talk with me and send the message logs that they both shared. I had discussed this with her prior, and even reached out to the AP directly, but AP was non-responsive. She texted slash called him in front of me, but didn't do the IG chat in front of me, as I didn't know they were IG friends at the time. I've been adjusting to the changes and working with my individual counselor, as well as seeing our marriage counselor regularly, not without some hiccups. We went on the planned vacation, but sometimes I felt like such a chump. I feel like I'm betraying myself slash my integrity, but we did have some good times. Sometimes I look back and spiral, it was so bad one day that I wanted to book a flight and leave mid-vacation. What the hell am I doing? This person two months ago was texting slash calling another man daily, participating in segil texts, sending photographs, and lied about the entire thing until I dragged it out of her. And here we are going on vacation together like nothing happened. She has allowed me access to her computer and phone on demand. She has installed the Life360 app so we know where each other are at all times. However, at the end of the day, I understand that if she wanted to cheat, she could still do so, as there are ways around these methods. We are still living together, sleeping in the same room, having sex frequently, it's hard to complain if you're getting laid regularly, but this could be a manipulative tactic to distract slash make me shut up. We are slowly working on reconnecting, and we are planning dating events together. Sometimes I feel like I did when I first dated her, and I'm extremely hopeful about the future as our relationship was not meeting either of our needs, and other times I feel like I'm living in a house where the roof can cave in at any moment, wondering why she chose to have an emotional affair, and whether there is more that she is not telling me. Over some time, our conversations have been less intense emotion-fueled outbursts, and more about connecting, communicating, and understanding. However, during one of our conversations turned away, I told her that I do sometimes feel like I didn't take time for myself to process the entire thing, she did not allow me that space. She made a comment that if I left, she would get the weapons back and that there is no life for me without you. She has been seeing a therapist and on medication for about 1.5 months now, but I need to figure out if this is control, or if she legitimately needs help. I will bring this up during our next MC session. As for myself, we went on a vacation where I was allowed to take some personal me time. I've been focusing on work and professional activities, and been getting more active physically. Tons of Corrine is well around the house to keep the intrusive thoughts away. Sometimes I don't feel like doing much of anything, probably the depression stage of grief. I indulge in that feeling sometimes and sit in it, and other times I try to keep busy. I do wish she took a more active role in recovery slash reconciliation. She has been researching books, she read not just friends, but mostly she wants to spend her time with me, part of me thinks she is worried that I will leave her, and part of me thinks that she is too reliant on me for her happiness. At the end of the day, I do not yet trust her. I do still love her, but at times I feel like putting in the effort to go on date nights is half-hearted on my side. 
Maybe I'm not entirely invested because I'm still processing this on my end, and feel like the relationship is still not yet safe slash secure, but I'm giving it my best shot. Maybe it's my actions not being in sync with my emotions of being betrayed slash lied to. I take ownership of the things I have done that contributed to the marriage not being so great, and I'm hopeful that whatever direction we ultimately go, I will either be a better partner for my wife, or be better at being a partner to someone else. If I walk away, I know it won't be because I didn't try. One interesting note, she mentioned that she did not approve or think me posting on Reddit was a healthy way to tackle this. There could be some truth to that as well, but I know I've gotten a lot of support here. Update 5, it's okay for now. We did couples therapy for about 10 sessions, but it got to the point where it was stabilizing the marriage. We had to go through about two to three counselors to get a good one that actually understood the impact of the infidelity, instead of pushing the blame back on me for the infidelity and trying to fix me. We go out on dates, I have full access to her location slash phone data. She doesn't blame me anymore for what happened, but instead says how sorry she is. I am proud of her for going through therapy individually, she discovered through therapy that her mother is a narc. Through that, she was able to identify that her need of constant validation and fear of not being validated came from other people, constantly trying to please others, and effectively making others responsible for her happiness. When I wasn't making her happy, she decided to try to get this validation from others. That's my theory for now. This is impossible for anyone to fulfill, nobody can be responsible for others' happiness. I'm proud of her for reading the book slash doing the work to identify some issues that were programmed from her childhood, it's hard to take a critical look at yourself and those closest to you and identify how their behavior can hurt. I still have this lingering feeling of mistrust, I haven't fully recovered from this. I'm trying is all I can say.